Welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing on about 154 square feet of bed space in my backyard. Tonight, I am going to plant out more flowers. As you can see, I've planted out a few. Um, this is the melon bed. And so it's gonna have melons and then mostly just flowers. Um, if I can like stick some things in there, I will. So maybe like radishes or beans if I have a space. Um, but I really want this to be a bunch of flowers and my melons growing. I have the small sunflowers here. I think they're called teddy bear sunflowers. I have a bunch of different nasturtiums going down the line um, and they're already getting eaten up by the uh, little green worms. <laughs> so like this one is, oh, there goes the worm. I knew they were out here somewhere because I just planted them out this weekend and they're already getting eaten by the little worms. Um, don't smush him. So in this case, I'm probably just gonna put a seed in the ground so it can regrow. I picked up this random bag of blood meal. Um, it's granulated, which I've never used before, but in my planting holes, I put bone meal, blood meal, um, and a little bit of granulated fertilizer. So this says for a single plant, we're gonna do three and one third tablespoons. So this is a half tablespoon. So I'm gonna do six and then just a little bit extra. I already put the bone meal in and I left the granulated fertilizer on the porch. So with that being said, there won't be any granulated fertilizer going into this hole. <laughs> I do fertilize throughout the year, so um, not gonna worry about that too much, but I do mix it in really good. Ooh, a little worm. Having worms in your bed is not a bad thing. That means there is life in the soil. Um, so I have a few marigolds left that I started and I was going to use my marigolds in the holes of the uh, cement blocks. I didn't feel like filling up the holes of the cement blocks. So I figured out a way to get them into the beds. Um, so I'm just gonna press it in, make sure I get good contact with the sides and voila. We have planted marigolds. So I'm gonna go down the line, have a few extra plants, um, flowers left that I haven't gotten a spot for in the bed. Um, these marigolds tonight was what I thought I should get in. And so that's what I'm gonna do. outside today and I am planting out my peppers I plan to plant everything this weekend tonight we're supposed to get to 38 what I figured I would do is kind of incorporate the Q&A into this vlog uh, and I can kill two birds with one stone let's get into the Q&A so someone asked do I think I'm in my forever home? It's kind of hard to answer. So I purchased my home when I was 23. I am now 38. I'll be 39 this year. Um, and so, wow, I don't know if I'm in my forever home or not. I'm comfortable where I am. Uh, I do kind of want more animals. And so if that is what I'm planning to do, then I'll probably have to look into other things. Uh, but the answer to that question is, I'm not sure, uh, but I am content where I am. Another question that I was asked was, do I have to deal with HOA? I don't deal with the HOA. I live in a pretty mature neighborhood um, and so I don't have to deal with that. So I'm sorry I can't really answer that question for you. But I'm sure you may be wondering why in the world are you planting your peppers out so early? If I hadn't planted them early last year in bags, I probably wouldn't. 
But experience from last year told me that I'm fine to do this um, and they will grow. It is planting day. I am so excited um, if I'm honest, which I am always trying to be honest with my subscribers and followers. I was so tired of taking care of starts. Um, and so next year, I do believe I'm going to start maybe two weeks later than I started this year, uh, just because I don't, I don't want to take care of starts for months at a time. Um, so these, I'm putting in some tomatoes. They're going to grow up this trellis. I'm going to do four tomatoes in this section, um, and then I'm going to heavily prune them which will cut down on the amount of fruit that I get. But I am putting all of my, well, not all of them, but a good amount, more, more than half of my uh, cherry and grape tomatoes in this space. Uh, so you get a lot of tomatoes off of those plants anyway. Um, so I'm going to plant four here and I'm gonna pull the suckers as they grow and I'm gonna trellis them up this cattle panel. Uh, so these are some tomatoes that I started later than my um, slicers or the larger tomatoes. And so this is cool for me. I didn't have to pot these up. And so that's what I'm going to try to achieve next year by starting them a little bit later. I'm sure if you've been watching gardening videos for any length of time, you know that I can plant this literally to right here. I could pull these two leaves off and plant it this deep. This whole stem will make roots um, if it's covered by soil. And so that gives you a stronger root system by planting it really deep. So if you have a leggy tomato, but it's still a strong tomato like that one was, uh, you can just plant it really deep and you'll be fine. It'll end up growing. There's a lot of worms over here. Let me show you. Someone asked basically how long seeds are viable for, how long they're good. And the date that's on the package is these seeds were saved in this year. Um, it tells the stores to sell it by a certain time because as time passes, seeds lose their uh, germination rate so like when the first year that you buy it the germination rate may be 80 percent the longer you have the seeds the germination rate may decrease but to answer your question you can keep seeds for years i don't throw any of my seeds away no matter when I purchase them, I have seeds that I purchased from when I was first starting to garden. Um, and I still have them and I still plant them. And in most cases, they still germinate. So I would not throw away any of my seeds. I would, whoa, dug that too deep. <laughs> I would wait. And, and just try to germinate them and see if it works. That's one thing I like about my garden. What do I really like about my garden? I like the makeup of it. Also, let me tell you how much deciding to plot out my garden early has helped me. This year, I literally know where everything's supposed to go. I have it set up. Like I took everything out yesterday and put it where it was supposed to be. And so this morning, I'm just going and putting them where they go. But what's one thing that I would change about my garden? I would do all no dig beds. And I will tell you why I say that. Um, I have raised beds and they, they perform fine. But when I look at a plant that's in the raised bed that's also in a no dig bed. The plant that's in a no dig bed, which essentially in the end is my soil, 
um, it, it is thriving better than in the no dig bed or in a container. Um, I would change the fact that I didn't test my soil. Um, so my soil looks compacted and it looks very dry. But when I look at the plants that's growing in it, 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 it has to be nutritious because they're not struggling at all. Uh, my roses, like I told you, the daisies are huge this year. Uh, my oregano, everything that's growing in the ground is, it is thriving. And so that is what I would change. I'm probably not going to change it because that would be a lot of work, but I would. So if you happen to see this in your garden, the white things that look like webs or strings. Mycorrhizal fungi. It's good for your garden. Another question. Uh, this is kind of a long one. There's a bunch of questions in one, but I appreciate them. It gave me something to think about. So uh, what is your favorite fruit vegetable to grow? My favorite fruit or vegetable? I'm gonna say potatoes. Betty says good morning. She's so loud this morning. I also don't fill my bags up to the top for tomatoes. Um, well, for any of the things in the bags, honestly, um, this is what I'm gonna do this year. I'm not gonna fill them up to the top because maybe halfway through the season, I'm gonna add more compost to the top of the bag. So kind of like top dressing them so that they can get a little more nutrients uh, because all of their nutrients is contained to this bag. And I'm throwing the cups into the bags. Last year, they stayed all year. My plan this year is to actually go back and make some labels or either just cut off this portion of the cup and stick it in the bag. We'll see what happens with that. <laughs> Another question. It's question time. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is something that I would never grow again? I will never grow bitter melon. <laughs> Not because I couldn't grow bitter melon, but because I ate bitter melon and I wasn't sure that I wasn't being poisoned. <laughs> and I know there are people who love bitter melon and it's like a staple food um, in, in some countries, but I literally was eating it and thinking, I grew the wrong vegetable, I'm being poisoned. Oh my God, this is poisonous. <laughs> it was awful to me. You know how some people don't like cilantro. I'm like, oh my God, I love cilantro. So hope I'm not offending anyone. Um, but the question was, what would I not grow again? I would not grow bitter melon again for that reason. I did not like it. They say to let it uh, soak in water and it will soak some of the bitter out of it. I did that and it did not work for me. And um, it may just be my taste buds. But to answer your question, I would never grow or eat <laughs> bitter melon again. So let's finish this off with, I think there's two more uh, questions. One of which is, what is my most common garden pest? My most common garden pest right at this moment <laughs> is a vole. <laughs> um, but aside from the vole, which was here last year, but did not seem to give me any problems. Um, but this year is going wild through the garden and I am running behind it, pushing the dirt down. Um, anyway, I just went and grabbed uh, one of those things that emits sound. I don't know what you call it. And so, hopefully, my vole, mole, whatever it is, problem will be over soon. I um, feel like that's the most humane way to do it, and so that is what I'm going to try. Uh, aside from that, my most common garden pest, 
I would say um, our aphids. I just got aphids off of my roses last year. That's what attacked my peppers. Um, I just do a lot of picking and plucking and hitting and watering because like you can spray aphids off. Um, but that's my most common garden pest. I do also run across hornworms pretty often. And the first time I saw one of those things, I was like, oh, it can have the garden. <laughs> but then I looked it up and I was like, okay. Um, and now that they have the chickens, then they can have a snack. There's two other things in here. Um, person wants to know if I can make cooking videos. Um, I can. I kind of want to focus on gardening at the moment, but maybe later on I'll start looking at doing cooking videos. Um, they also want to know if I could do many vlogs of my weekends. I am like hit. <laughs> and when I say hit, like between Instagram and between YouTube and the fact that I actually work a full-time job, this isn't like what I do for a living. I really don't have time to record and edit two different types of videos so I would while I would like to that's not probably something that I'm gonna be able to do so the last question was what are the most important tips for beginners in gardening my most important tip is just not to take it too seriously because things are gonna die things aren't gonna grow um, gardening isn't one of those things that's always turning out the way that you expect it to. Uh, for instance, last year I didn't grow one loofah. I grew a loofah plant. Um, my first year gardening in the summer was awful. Like I got a few cucumbers. Um, my tomatoes were awful. They got blight. Um, so just don't take it too seriously. Um, I would also say though, if you are going to do it, because it does cost money, to garden um, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to garden um, but if you're not doing like in ground and you want to get raised beds and you want to do trellises and bags and things that does cost money I'm not saying it's expensive but it does cost money I would say to do your research um, because my first year gardening I didn't research anything I just threw everything in some bag dirt that I got from um, Lowe's or Home Depot um, and I'm not going to say that's why my first year was awful, but it was really bad. Uh, so I would say do research. YouTube is wonderful. I, I learned a lot from YouTube um, and then maybe books. And then the Internet has all kind of information as well. Um, I would say maybe start out small. So I started out small and then because of the type of person <laughs> that I am, it just grew into what it is right now. You know, like the chickens and all of the beds, it just grew into that. But I would say start out small because it is a lot of work. And in the heat of the summer, you, you, can, um, you can end up saying, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> Um, so yeah, those are my tips. Uh, don't take it too serious. Make sure you do your research and start out small. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. Um, I am happy that you are here and join me to watch this video. Uh, don't forget to join me over on Instagram at Miss MS Asia Spratly. Um, I post over there about everything going on in the garden and I post there every day. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful week. I'm going to leave the link to this chair, which I absolutely am loving. Um, it's from Home Garden Trends and I'll leave a 10% uh, off discount code too. Uh, I posted about it on Instagram. If you're interested, um, you can go over there and read, but, um, I will see you all Wednesday. Bye.